Well, hello, friend, and welcome to another episode of Van Life Living in the Ark. I'll tell you, I've hesitated to turn this camera on for sure today. I come out here, I need to fill up some water here at the park, and, uh, well, I'm just struggling with the thought process. Because my father keeps telling me not to worry about anything, and I don't know about you, friend, but most of my life I never really studied Jesus, and I didn't understand God, and I didn't receive the Holy Spirit the way I have it now. And sometimes that's wonderful, but right now I'm kind of in this period of waiting. Though I'm not really waiting, I'm doing videos all the time, I'm posting them online and doing what he asks of me. But on the other hand, there's days like today where I kind of feel pointless. So if you remember what God said to Moses was, I am that I am, right? Well, I am what I am, just like you are what you are. And I spent my whole life thinking I had a point, and I kept giving this point that everybody else kept giving to me because I really wasn't understanding Jesus and didn't really want to. I guess be quite honest with you, friend. <laughs> Some of the truths I weren't, re I was not ready to accept, you know, and I was trying to figure out who I was by experience, and because I didn't believe God was love, I mean, I kept saying I thought God was love, but I really didn't believe that, and, and I didn't, wasn't even sure if I believed in God, to be quite honest with you. I mean, I was always searching for him, but, and there was times that I just knew that I, that God talked to me, and everybody told me it was coincidence, and, well, here at the end of these days, he's not recently, but in the last few years, let's just say that this last decade, he's done enough things that I know he exists. And I just can't get around that, right? And so I've been doing what he asks of me. And I talk about Jesus and the parables. And just earlier today, I saw something on Facebook, somehow an ad popped up on my thing, but it was talking about the New World Order that's starting to come to pass uh, because of the World Economic Forum, which if you guys have listened to any of my videos, you know that I've talked about that. Because at this point, you don't have to, it's no longer a conspiracy theory, friend. Anybody that has awakened sees what's going on and where they're going with this. And everybody that really thinks about it and looks at it realizes that America must fall for them to do what they want to do because it's our, the new world order is about changing money, right? It's about changing power and America was the superpower, but the new world order is actually not a country. It's a money system and it's called the World Economic Forum is the one who's trying to set it into place and everybody sees that coming and there's all kinds of things going on and setups and people are talking about it most christians still aren't friend because they they they're praying for the rapture but what most christians don't realize is that most christians aren't getting taken out in the rapture unless uh, you know something i don't friend because jesus said at the end of the age that his uh brides were going to have to light their lamps right and that a lot of them were going to run out of oil. And they were going to run to their neighbor and say, hey, give me your oil. And they're going to say, no, run to the store and get your own, right? I've talked to you about how that's going to look. So when you wake up, you're going to be lacking the love and faith and the relationship with my Father through the Holy Spirit to hold on in the fear. So then you're going to, when you figure out that that's what you need, you're going to try to get it. And the only way to get it is to give it, right? Because Jesus said that the only way to receive the kingdom is by grace, but the only way to keep it is to give it away. Well, the church only talks half a truth, friend. They're serpents. They wiggle half a tongue. They tell you what you want to hear, so you'll give them what they want. And most of them, it's just theology. They just believe in everything but Jesus. I believe in nothing but Jesus. So it is clear to me through what Jesus said that this truth that he gave is true. And you can see it playing out here at the end of the age. And Revelation is playing out too. You can see it. A lot of it's already done. Uh, you can go see the one of the Antichrists receive his deadly wound, right? 
back in the early 1700s. I highly recommend you go check out America to Babylon or Babylon to America is the remake. It doesn't matter. You'll find it on YouTube. So there's a lot of things that are already going down, but now you've got the wilderness goat coming and everybody thinks that they know the wilderness goat, friend, and people just don't understand what's going on there. You recognize that Jesus came to represent the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So he did the fall feast at the same time he did the spring feast because he was the ultra goat of Yom Kippur, just like he was the Passover lamb. So he fulfilled both feasts at once. I hope you recognize that, friend. Most Christians don't. In fact, none that I know of, except for a couple people I talk to, and they seem to believe what I'm saying is true, which isn't very many that I can tell. But it doesn't matter. So understand that the wilderness goat comes back before Christ does, which is Judas. Because I did talk about it yesterday in a video, or not yesterday, a day, few days ago when I did the last video. I told you that Jesus took his bread, which was his body, and dipped it in the wine, which was his blood. He handed it to Judas. And when Judas took it, his blood was poured on him. Jesus' blood was poured on Judas. And it said that Satan entered into him because Satan wasn't there to begin with, right? So, and then Judas said, not me, Lord. And Jesus said, go do what you must do. He cast him from the lot. He cast him into the wilderness. So Judas is your wilderness goat. And he's come to do exactly what he did the first time, and that's to judge Christ's body, right? Before it was his literal body. Now, this time, it's the body of Christ is the church. Understand this. Most people aren't going to get this. You're going to need to really go look at Yom Kippur because what you're going to find is that Yom Kippur required two clean goats and a lot was drawn. One went to the wilderness, the other one to the altar. So understand Judas was a clean goat. And I know that people aren't going to believe that because he betrayed Jesus, but Jesus made him do it. Now that you, if you go look at these things, friend, I'm telling you, you will see it there. You, it'll be clear to you. You'll say, how did I not see that? That's what I said when the Holy Spirit gave it to me. Because he gave it to me as a download. I wasn't even reading on Yom Kippur or anything. I was just in meditation with God, talking to the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden I got this download about that. And this is going back a year or better. I don't remember exactly when it was he gave it to me. I started getting piecemeal, but I didn't understand the whole thing until, well, until he gave it me the whole thing. So what the point here is, is that Jesus is making Judas betray his body. So if you remember correctly, it said that Christ broke the seal. That's because he's gonna keep my father blameless. When they said, who is worthy of breaking the seal? They didn't say God, did they? They said Jesus. So Jesus is going to break the seal and make Judas betray him again because his body did not do what he said. Because if you go look, you will see that the church preaches that if you just believe Jesus died on the cross for you, that you'll be saved and then you get this free kingdom in your death that you didn't seek in your life. And Jesus called that a lie over and over. But because the church doesn't believe in Jesus, they believe in the Pharisees and the Christian theology that they cook up, they're not getting it. The whole Bible was about Jesus. So if there was one person, one thing that you should have went and understood, it's Christ. Because Christ told you at the end of the age he was going to deny his own disciples. He said his disciples would owe twice the debt. He also said the Pharisees would owe twice the debt, right? So, and he said that if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom. Now, the Pharisees, he was judging a thought system, right? Not an actual people. So now if you go get a red letter edition of the Bible and you see what Jesus judged the Pharisees for, you'll know whether you're being like a Pharisee. If you are not forgiving others, then you're still not forgiven, because Jesus said that. And Jesus said that the Pharisees would stand on the steps of the temple and judge the tax collectors, and it would be better to be like the tax collector, right? Not the Pharisee. Because the tax collector is going to owe his debt, but the Pharisee is going to owe twice the debt. So the Christians that stood on the steps of the temple or wherever they did it 
and said, woe to those gay people, woe to those homeless people, woe to those drug addicts, and they judged them instead of going and trying to save them by teaching them love and forgiveness, well, they're going to owe twice the debt at the end of the age. And I want you to understand this, because a lot of people still think that when Jesus was talking about Gehenna, he was talking about eternal hell. He was talking to you when he gave you that parable about that the servant came before the master and he was in a throw, he was in a sell him and his entire family for the debt he owed, and he and he begged the master for forgiveness because that was me begging Jesus for forgiveness, friend, because I needed forgiveness, something terrible. You might not. I needed it, something terrible. I knew that I wasn't a worthy child. So anyway. So you begged the master for forgiveness, but he said, if you go out and you judge other people and you hold them accountable, that at the end of the age that he's gonna, you're going to go back before the judge, which is Christ, and he's going to say, wicked servant, you know, I gave you forgiveness, and then you went out and held your fellow servants accountable, and for that I'm going to throw you into prison and you're going to pay all that's due. I want you to understand that how is a Christian going to pay all that's due and pay twice the debt of a non-Christian if they're going to eternal hell and you're going to heaven? Right? Do you get that? This is just things that people don't look at. So I'm really highly suggesting that you stop listening to these Pharisees that are wiggling half a tongue like serpents because that's what the serpent in the garden was. It was... A serpent, because serpents have a forked tongue, right? Right? So that's why a serpent is a serpent in the Bible. And if you hide your thoughts from God, well, then the serpent has the ability to deceive you. So all the Pharisees that say you can't talk to God through the Holy Spirit are very easily deceived because all they have is knowledge of men, because they go get degrees from men that got degrees from men. Jesus told you not to do that. Jesus said, call no man teacher. I'm your teacher, right? So I sure hope that you have a red letter edition of the Bible at this point and that you have accepted that Jesus is your teacher. Because if you have not accepted Jesus as your teacher, well, then you can be deceived by all these Pharisees. Because, friend, you know, every Christian tells me about how they have the absolute truth and this is the way it's got to be. Friend, why is there a thousand different subcategory of churches? I mean, you not only have Methodists, then you have United Methodists. You have Baptists. You have this Baptist. You have all these people. The church is so splintered, there's not a church left, friend. But that's because they've been trying to get back to the truth from where the Catholic Church took them. Because, I mean, they, they told you you didn't even have to follow the Ten Commandments. Get this. The Pope said he had the right to change the laws of God, and that's what gives him Ecclesiastes power. Friend, it's in writing. Go look. Go watch that movie I told you, American of Babylon. They'll give you the exact literature and where. But anyway, they're not the only ones talking about it, friend. If you go look at my clues to the kingdom, you will see that I've got all kinds of different people talking about it. So the mark on the forehead that you're going to wear going into uh, tribulation is going to be God's seal. And a seal has name, title, and territory. Well, the fourth commandment says that, you know, my father's God, maker of heaven and earth. That's name, title, territory, right? So now you know what the seal is. Now, a lot of people are going to deny that because they don't believe they're going to have to abide in the Saturday Sabbath. Well, friend, Jesus did say that there was some sort of people getting out, right? So I'm not saying that, that he's not going to take you because he very well might. He doesn't show me that part. I don't, I don't understand the rapture. I don't understand whether it's kind of like what he showed you in the Bible where it talked about when the abomination of desolation, he told them to not go back for their things, to head for the mountain. I'm not sure if that's what he meant, that you're going to be taken to that mountain because the Holy Spirit's going to tell you to go. I don't know whether he's going to take some people one place, some people the other. I don't know whether it's going to be an outright take up in spirit. I know that most of the churches have revelation almost all wrong i can tell you that much because they don't get the wilderness goat at all they think that's the son of satan which the son of satan is the son of corporations one of them 
Because basically a son of Satan is a son of selfishness, right? Because a son of God is a, son, is a spirit of love. It means that you choose to love God and your neighbor and think as much of them as you do yourself. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, right, friend? You can't save everybody. Jesus already did that. That's not your purpose. However, you are to receive the Holy Spirit, and he will tell you what your purpose is. But you have to be seeking his will, not yours. And so there's an awful lot of things going on, and it goes really deep. But I've been telling you video after video, breaking down parable after parable, and I sure hope if you're not going to listen to me, you're going to go read what Jesus said and read. But I will tell you that what my Father gives to me, I give to you. So you can go read what Jesus said and read and see if what I've been saying is there. And if it is, then maybe you might want to look at that if you need a little help on getting a little speedily. Because, friend, the hour's getting late, and nobody wants to admit that, but that's the truth. You can see it, friend. This one world order is getting ready to try to collapse the American economy. Everybody knows it, friend. Nobody wants to admit it, but everybody knows it. It's looking. But understand, if you run and grab an AR-15 or these guns and go hide in foxholes, you're not entering my Father's kingdom. Jesus told you that too. He told you that right now the corporate elite are, have set up these underground arcs. And they think they're going to steal my father's age. That's what he was talking about with Satan stealing his age. <clears throat> they think they're going to go hide in these arcs that they created underground. And then they're going to come up and steal my father's age. They're not doing it. Most of them follow this movie called The Secret and they believe God's a genie and what you focus on expands. Friend, if you believe that, then you understand there's a spiritual realm beyond what it is you understand. And you should have realized that God is not a genie and that there has to be a reason my father created all this. So if you are loving yourself and not loving anyone else and not loving this one you call genie, which is my father, well then, friend, you've got a debt to pay. So I'm hoping that you're going to think about that and repent for what you've done and make a new choice. But I highly recommend that nobody enter those arcs because right in Revelation, friend, it laid it out. It did tell you that they would hide in their caves and their dens and they would pray to the mountains fall on us. That's because they would know why they're doing what they did was wrong. And when those doors to their arcs get sealed, they're going to know why it was done. So we're not talking an accidental mistake here, friend. So the Bible literally told us all about this. And Jesus literally laid this out from top to bottom. So most Christians don't believe what Jesus said is true. And therefore, they don't realize that what the church is saying isn't true. Because if what they were saying was true and all you had to do is accept Christ as your Savior and you didn't have to do anything, then nobody would be going to get oil and they wouldn't miss the door to the wedding, right? So when you start understanding Jesus, you will see that the statements that these folks are making have absolutely nothing to do with what Jesus said. And since he was the word made flesh, it is his word that matters, not other people's interpretation of their theology. So I sure hope you're going to get a red letter edition of the Bible and read what Jesus said and read. That's the assured way to know that you know my Father because Jesus told you that, right? He said, you know the Son, that you'll know the Father. And then when you get to know the Father, you really know the Son. That's what he said. Go get a red letter edition of the Bible and you'll see he said that. So if you don't know the Son, you don't know the Father. And if you don't know the Father, you still don't know the Son. You might say you believed he died on the cross for you, but you still don't believe a word he said. Because the, uh, the theologians are always calling him a liar. You know, he gave you that thing about the, that Lazarus was starving outside of the rich man's gate and it, he was going to end up across the great divide. Well, they say that, that he was talking to the Jews, not the apostles. Friend, why would he be saying that to somebody that's going to end up across the great divide regardless? Do you get what's going on? Every bit of truth they've given you is a lie. I hope you can understand that and go read some Jesus. Because either Jesus is the truth and the life, or he's not. And since it was Jesus that said it, well, if everything he said isn't true, well, then that's not true either. 
So I really hope you're going to look at the truth that Christ gave, because if you don't, you'll owe twice the debt at the end of the age. Now, there is no eternal hell. He only brought up Hades, which is Greek pagan religion, right? The Hades didn't even, it doesn't even go along with Jewish religion. What he did talk about was Gehenna, which was a state or place of mental suffering. I mean, do you understand back there where he said that if you didn't make it out right with your neighbor, you would suffer Gehenna's fire? That was the wrath of your neighbor, friend. That's mental suffering. That would put you in a state of mental suffering if you don't make it right with your neighbor. Y'all are getting this completely messed up. Go look at it and put some logic to your religion, friend. Stop letting these theologians teach you things that are just nothing but lies. And I don't care if you call me a liar. That really doesn't matter to me. What I want you to do is go read what Jesus said and read and assume if the word is logos, which means logic, that you can put some logos, logic, to what Jesus said and find a higher truth. I promise you it's there. The Holy Spirit revealed it to you. He revealed it to me, friend. So, the end of the age is hell. It talked about, you know, that the dead in Christ rise first. Well, the dead in Christ or those that don't believe in Christ are going to rise first. However, they're not there, they're here. The people that don't believe, there is going to be one last big to do before this is all over with, friend. You can expect that America is about to get a major, major Christian revolution going on. And friend, I hope you're looking at that because they're just not telling you the truth. Because there is no eternal hell. The thought of Satan that the riders dragging into hell is a publicly traded corporation. If you go look at said in Revelation that Satan is what is not yet is, right? So it's a thought that's in your head. It's a serpent. It's in your head. It's in my head. It's in everyone's head. That's what it does. It tells you half-truths. It tells you lies. It tells you go do something but forgets to tell you the consequences to those actions. Now, people that didn't even accept Jesus don't, aren't even aware that they're spirit yet. So they have not became divine in nature, meaning die, two, vine, fruit, the fruit of two vines. Because they think that they're just abiding by laws of men and they don't understand that there's laws of God and that you're of the spirit of love and the spirit of selfishness. They don't even understand that yet. So they're not going to comprehend a word I say until they start doing the things Jesus asked. But if you've gotten to know Jesus a little bit, you should have a clue on some of the things I'm saying. Some of these things I'm telling you should, you should be ringing a bell. If they don't, I highly suggest you get a red letter edition of the Bible, which I've said 10 times in this video at least, to go do that. And if I didn't say it 10 times, let me say it another 10 times. This is very important, friend. It is very important because Jesus said that if you don't eat his flesh, meaning his words, and drink his blood, meaning his spirit, you would by no means enter the kingdom. Understand my father only created you for one purpose. That was relationship. If you don't want to fulfill that purpose, he doesn't want you in his kingdom. If someone can receive the Holy Spirit, which there's plenty of us out there that can tell you that we talk to God. I'm not the only one, friend. There's Troy Black. There's all these different people that talk to God. If we can talk to God, it's because we choose and because we're willing to seek out the kingdom by doing the things Jesus asked. I'm not saying any of us are perfect, but you don't have to be perfect. Christ died so that you may live. My father's keeping my uh, being kept clean by the son. Understand that. So, but that's the reason Christ is going to judge us, not the father. But my father's not angry because he knew the end in the beginning. So what happened was, because Christ came and died so that you may know the love of the father and the son, you were supposed to put your thoughts before God and then God will clean your thoughts. Understand my father wants to clean you. He didn't expect you to come clean. The greater your relationship becomes with the father by getting to know the son, the cleaner your thoughts will become. And 
until you get to the point where you know my father. But you have to really get to know the son. And I'm really telling you that's the truth. I don't care what your church is telling you. These churches are liars, and I'm outright telling you that. And I don't care if they nail me to a cross, friend. Jesus said, he who saves his life will lose it. And he who loses it for my sake will gain it. Well, friend, if you want this kingdom where we're letting our children get murdered in our schools and in our streets, and we do nothing except store up money in bank accounts like Jesus told us not to, and, and do selfish things instead of trying to serve our neighbor, if you want this kingdom, friend, he's going to let you have it, but you're not getting my father's. I hope you're clear on that. I hope you're really clear at this point that, that you've got to get to know Jesus inside out, upside down, and backwards. Because right now, a lot of people are killing in the name of Christ, right? They think it's okay to do that. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus said, offenses must come, but woe to those who bring them. Jesus said that before me, the kingdom suffered violence and was taken by force, but after me, it won't. So there is two places that there's statements where I hear Christians justifying hypocrisy. One is where he said that I didn't come to bring peace but a sword. What he was talking about was not the sword that you were going to go kill them with, but the sword that they were going to kill you with, right? Because his apostles all mostly died. And a lot of Christians kept getting fed to lions and all kinds of stuff. Crucified, all kinds of things happened to the Christians. So he was not talking about his, uh, his followers doing the killing. They were supposed to be doing the dying. And then notice when the Pope came along, when Constantine molested the church, well, they went from dying to killing. How did he do that? Well, he gave him the one thing that everyone's tempted by, power, right? So he gave them positions in his government, and then he twisted it. Over time, the Pope has twisted that religion into nothing that looks like what Jesus called Christianity. And you need to go get and understand that, friend. I'm telling you so. Okay, so also at the Last Supper where Jesus said this is not a time for peace that you need to go get, uh, pick up your money belts and your swords, right? Okay, so I hear people justifying violence by that statement. Well, now let's look at that statement a little closer. So the apostles grabbed two swords and threw them on the table. And Jesus said, that's enough. So now let me ask you a question, friend. Why is two swords enough? I mean, we don't, it doesn't say how many are in the room, but you could assume there was a lot. And even if we're just talking the 12 apostles minus the one for perdition, that's still 11 swords they need to, to create an army, right? So once they got two, he said that's enough. Well, that's because all he needed was one, because it said that he had to be listed with the transgressors, right? And the other thing is because he wanted to give you one last final example of how amazing he was and how much like my father he was. And that's because when Malchus, when Peter cut Malchus's ear off, Jesus healed it. You understand that? Jesus healed his ear. So Jesus' last act of free will was to love and forgive the man that came to whip, beat, and crucify him. Do you get that? That is love, friend. That is why they were to have a sword at the end. So that Jesus could show you that one last act, even as they came to do the deed. It was, should be clear to you, friend, by that point, that you know the love of Christ. And if you get to know everything he said, you will get to know the love of Christ is the love of my Father. But you have to figure out those parables. You have to understand. People think Jesus did everything he did, and he didn't. Because Jesus told you that. Because Jesus said, when he went to raise Lazarus from the dead, he said, Thank you, Father, for hearing me. You always hear me. But I say this out loud so that they may hear me. So what he was saying is that every time he's done a miracle, it's because he thanked his Father for it and because he knew his Father would do it. It was not Christ. In the beginning, there was only God. My Father created a Son that was with him in the beginning. I can't explain to you the whole truth because you'll never understand it. I keep telling you that Jesus said that if you can't even understand these simple things, how will you ever understand the kingdom? So understand that if you want the absolute truth, you have to get it from my father.
and my Father will give it to you. But it comes at a price. The price is high and the path is narrow, and when he'll give it to you is up to him. Friend, I was banging on the door to the kingdom, screaming, hooping, and hollering, demanding he give me my bread, and he wouldn't give me my bread. It took the longest time till he was ready to give it to me. <laughs> right? And even when he gave it to me, I didn't have a clue on what I had. This relationship was an amazing thing, friend, but it, it takes some work. I'm not lying to you. And, and you're going to have to become willing to die in order to live. Die to selfishness. He doesn't, he doesn't want to kill us all, but some of us are going to have to die, friend. And you can see what's coming. If you don't see it coming, I don't know what to tell you, friend. You're blinder than a bat. Because any Christian that has not fallen asleep can see where this nation is going and where this world is going. They can see that the World Economic Forum is one world order. They can see that the owner of BlackRock, well, the co-founding CEO, is not only the CEO of BlackRock, but he is also on the board of the World Economic Forum and BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street. Those three companies own all the other companies in America. Amazon, Walmart, all of them, friend. Your oil companies, your transportations, your airlines, your everything. Those companies own everything, friend. And if you don't think they have the power to crash this economy, you're just wrong. They own everything. They could just do horrible things and nobody's paying attention to this, friend. They have you blind. So this is a great time that if you don't have oil in your lamp, friend, to go get it. I'm not telling you to go pick up guns and fight. Jesus said that's not the way this works. We bring the kingdom by bringing it to our neighbor. So if you haven't been serving your neighbor, now's a good time to go read Jesus and start doing what he said. Because he told you at the end of the age, I don't know you. I was hungry, you didn't feed me. I was naked, you didn't clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Go read, friend. That's in red. That's what Jesus said. I'm not lying to you here, friend. I'm not lying at all. Please go read what Jesus said and read. You don't have to believe a word I say, but you have to believe every word he said because he's the coming king and he gave you kingdom rules. And my father already told you that he isn't going to accept the fact that the Pharisees deceived you because Jesus told you that if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, that you would by no means receive the kingdom. Friend, you can still see that they love to wear their robes long and their phylacteries wide. They still love the meetings in the uh, marketplace and the best seats at banquets. Friend, nothing's changed. I hope you're recognizing that. And some of them actually don't wear long robes and their phylacteries wide. But friend, there's all kinds of Christian preachers standing on the steps to the temple judging people, and Jesus told you not to do that, that you'd be better to be the person you're judging than the one that's doing the judging. So friend, I'm hoping you're going to go read what Jesus said, understand that his warning, and then repent and make a new choice. Because if you don't make a new choice, you won't have one. And my Father will not accept you into the kingdom because you did not choose to seek the kingdom. Because if Jesus is the Word made flesh, and you knew that, and you chose not to get to know Him, then you chose not to get to know my Father. I don't care what you say about going to church once a week, friend. You either put my Father first or you didn't. You either hung the laws and the prophets on only two commandments or you didn't. I mean, this is a simple decision, and it's time for you to make a choice if you haven't already. So just go get a red letter edition of the Bible and decide if you want to make a new choice because <laughs> I love you friend I love everybody and that's the reason I'm talking I recognize that because I'm saying these things friend they tossed Jesus from the vineyard for doing exactly what I'm doing I'm calling out the Pharisees like it is I know the truth Jesus told me it doesn't matter friend I want that kingdom, not this one. I want the kingdom coming. I want the one where I don't have to watch our children get butchered in school while everybody says, oh, well, don't look because you're not allowed to because the corporations say we're not allowed. Screw the corporations, friend. I'm my father's son. 
I'm in my Father, and my Father's in me. I'm in Christ, and Christ is in me. And he whispers in my inner ear, and I shout it from the rooftop. This is my rooftop. If you don't like my rooftop, don't listen. But I'm telling you, friend, I am not tolerating this insanity knowing that if I just lay down and take it, that my father's going to make me answer for it. I made him a promise. He gave me the truth. Now I have to talk about it. But I've given you all kinds of truths to help you understand things if you'll just go look. But go read what Jesus said and read, and then put it to apply it to what Jesus said and see if it makes sense. Instead of believing the Pharisees about this eternal hell, how it's going to last forever, go look up some stuff from the Greek. Go see if that I'm not telling you the truth about Gehenna and what he was talking about. I don't expect you to believe me. I expect you to hear me. Be shocked enough to actually go look at something different. And then you go do your own investigation and you seek the Father through the Holy Spirit like Christ told you to. And then back it all up with what Jesus said. Because friend, Christ is the coming King. It doesn't matter who I am. Get that? I'm a messenger. My Father sent me to tell you this truth. You don't have to believe it and I don't care. But Christ is the coming King. If you will not accept Him as your King, you will not enter His kingdom. And if you will not abide in kingdom rules, you will not enter his kingdom. So it doesn't matter whether you say you believe Jesus was the Son of God and he died on the cross for your sins. If you're still doing what he told you not to, he told you a slave to sin has no permanent place in the kingdom. That is the words of your Christ. That is the words of your King. So if you're out doing things to hurt your neighbor and not thinking about it, and therefore not even know you're doing it, don't expect to enter the kingdom because Christ told you to be thinking about, you know, put some logic, some logos to your religion. The word is logos, logic. I've said that twice in this video now, friend. I'm sure hoping you're going to go put some logic to it. And stop listening to this insanity that religion is talking about. For crying out loud, if you can't see the serpent tongue in their mouths, I don't know what to tell you. you go read Jesus and it's going to start becoming apparent. Because if you start really getting to know Jesus, you're going to see that these, the church is full of wolves dressed in sheep's clothing. And as you get to know Jesus more and more, the scale is going to start falling from your eyes and you're going to see him everywhere. That's what happened to me, friend. So just go do what Jesus told you to do, and that's eat his word, which is his flesh, and drink his spirit, which is his blood, because... Otherwise, you will by no means enter the kingdom, and that is in red because Jesus said that. All right, friend, we well, just know that I love you because my Father loves you, and I know that I sometimes come across hard. It's not that I want to come across hard, friend, but I don't want you to be stuck at the end of the age going through hell because you listened to some Pharisee wiggle half a tongue. I love them. I forgive them. Jesus said, I have to forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus forgave them, for they know not what they did. But Jesus spoke against his, and I have to speak against mine, because that's what Christ tells me I have to do. That's the message he gave me. I would much rather have that one from, there's a thing on the video called uh, the Trent Tribe on Facebook. This guy preaches like the happy message of Christ. I love that guy, man. He's amazing. If you ever hear of him, go check out the Trent Tribe. I love him. Unfortunately, that's not the message my father gave me. And I'm not saying that his theology is right because I don't know his theology. But I know that <clears throat> he is welping, wel very welcoming to everyone and makes it clear that God loves all of his children, period. That's what's important to me, friend. I don't care if he believes in eternal hell or not. That doesn't matter. Do you think my father's upset on how much power you think Satan has? You're supposed to be in relationship with him. That's what matters. You all can give Satan all the power if you want, but he's got no power except the power you give him. And Jesus told you that. Because your thought of Satan is your thought of selfishness. The seven deadly sins are the seven aspects of selfishness. The seven attributes of selfishness. Go look. Hi, right, friend. Once again, I love you because my father loves you. And may God bless you and yours.